Three, goodness. Okay. Um, introduction to the members. Roll call, please. residents, but we do entertain all of Oahu's concerns and the state as well. However, there is conduct for these meetings, and it's meant to be for all of our benefit that we adhere to the time limits. And there is an agenda. The agenda has the time limits available. We're going to have a new uh, timekeeper over there, and it's Clint. Clint is the assigned timekeeper, and Clint will just give you a kind of a heads up when you need to wrap things up, okay? Uh, outside of that, if there's conduct that is not going to be uh, dismissed in a properly manner, proper manner, then the chair is going to take appropriate action. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Tom. Okay. Uh, let's see here. Let's move right into our uh, uh, report for the uh, Fire Department. Good evening, everybody. My name is Emmett Hall. I'm uh, with the Ever Beach Fire Station, and I'd like to say thanks for uh, letting us come by and give you the monthly statistics. We had, uh, for April 2007, I'm sorry, April 2008, we had uh, five wildland fires, two rubbish fires, 82 medical calls, one search and rescue, and 12 miscellaneous calls, which would be like child boxing call or broken engine, that kind of thing. The monthly safety tip is, uh, involves wildland fires. As you know, uh, summertime, there's an increased risk of wildland fires. The department recommends that anybody whose house is near wild vegetation create a 30-foot wide fire break by clearing that vegetation and clutter. Should also have an emergency preparedness plan in case of a wildland fire which would cause an evacuation. And you should also consider if your home is near a wildland area that firefighters will need to access that area, possibly through your yard. So keep that in mind. Um, does the board have any questions? Board members? Any questions, concerns? Okay. Uh, community, any questions, concerns for fire department? Thank you, sir. Good report. Thank you. All right, hold please, department, please. Good evening. Good evening, uh, board members, audience. Uh, my name is Mike Johnson. I'm a lieutenant for the Honolulu Police Department. I'll be reporting on the uh, crime st st statistics for the month of April 2008. I passed out a copy to all the board members, and on the table to my right, is uh, copies of the uh, report if anyone would like to get a copy for themselves. During the month of April 2008, there was unfortunately one murder, uh, one sex assault, 24 burglaries, 11 vehicles were broken into, seven auto thefts, 34 cases of theft, 21 cases of property damage, 58 uh, <coughs> Motor vehicle collisions. Um, the community police uh, policing team message of the month is reporting uh, drug activity. Uh, drug activity in Hawaii is a problem of major concern to all citizens and communities. Drugs affect not only individuals and their families, but entire communities. 
If you suspect drug dealing in your neighborhood, please call or email any of the uh, following organizations, the Honolulu Police Department, the Attorney General's Office, the Drug Nuisance Abatement Unit, or the Drug Enforcement Administration. Their phone numbers uh, are all listed here on the, on the form, and if you don't happen to get a copy of the form, of course they're all listed in the phone book. And uh, uh, for, as far as HPD goes, just look for the Narcotics Vice Division. You'll see the phone number there for them. And that concludes my report. All right, thank you, sir. Uh, board members, any questions? Uh, Ann? Um, hi. Um, I have a question about uh, the web. Um, over in Hawaii, Kai. The, the what, man? The web, a website for Eva Beach. In the Hawaii, Kai area, they have a website. The police department has a website that shows every street. What? Not specific addresses, of course, but uh, the crimes that were in right. that area, that specific street. Is anything like that coming to Evan Beach? Uh, I'm not sure, but I'll uh, look into it and report back to you uh, next month. Okay, thank you. Okay, any, other, any other board members? <coughs> okay, community, any uh, questions for HPD? I thought I saw some hands on the back. <coughs> Anybody? No? Okay, thank you very much, sir. Thank you. Folks, have a nice evening. Thank you. Yeah. All right, moving right along. Wheat and seed. Anybody here from wheat and seed? Uh, Mr. Beamer, uh, you want to talk about your packet for wheat and seed? Yeah. First, I'd like to. I gave a hollow to the weed and feed uh, auction for him a packet to inform the neighborhood board to wait for the ship of the weed and feed pieces, the neighborhood uh, security watch, and the neighborhood uh, security patrol. I'm particularly interested because I live in the labor state and we have a small part called uh, to a playground. And for a few years ago, it became uh, nothing but a haven for drug dealers and very unsavory people. So the Weed and Sea officers came out on Saturday. They held a uh, picnic and a nation food. The ancient kids and invited the residents to come over and talk about organizing the neighborhood to watch them patrol. It was very successful. They worked with the neighborhood, and I can truthfully say that that park is clean. Before they helped us organize our patrols, we couldn't go there. The neighbors wouldn't use it, the kids couldn't play there. Now it's perfectly clean. So I'd like to thank the Weed and Feed for their effort and helping us organize. All right, thank you, Mr. Beaver. I'm sorry. For Weed and Feed. Oh, okay. Follow up. Weed and Feed. I just wanted to mention that I'm from the prosecutor's office and we work on the agency, so if anybody had any questions. Uh, we need your uh, name, please. My name is Cecilia Chang. Okay, and from the... Honolulu Prosecutor's Office, oh, Community prosecutor. Prosecution Program, okay. which includes Weed and Seed. Oh, okay. The, the okay. last one, I asked the question of to the Weed and Seed people. If the DEA and the, the drug enforcement people is working in a community with the D, uh, with the we and C. And the question was that that's kind of a clandestine uh, uh, undercover operation. But but up front, I mean that's that's the sources that the we and C got to work with the DEA and the. So can get to the question. So the question is now that you come in front of us and tell us yeah we're working with the with the. We're from, you're from the prosecutor's office. 
Are you guys working in conjunction with the WNC, the DEA, and the, and the, the drug enforcement people? Prosecutor's office is one of the many partners. Exactly, yeah. But last one, they had a different story. Uh, Blame. So, so I'm, asking her, I'm asking her. I don't want to dialogue. Okay. Ask a question. Yeah, the question is, are you guys working Blame. with the, the weed and seed in the community? You just answer that question. No, but you, you should see it. The DA yes. and, the, and the, the, um, the, the prosecuting, of, you guys are working with the community. Yeah, the answer was yes. Okay, that's what okay, I wanted to know. Um, they gave us a different story last one, the weed and okay. seed. That's right. why I want to get a clarification. Thank you very much. All right, uh, please, let me remind everybody. First of all, please pay attention to our timekeeper. We have a lot of people in the audience. We have a lot of issues on the agenda. I would encourage everyone to pay attention to what we're doing, limit your questions, and uh, we'll try to address everybody that we can. Okay? Thank you very much. Uh, Gary, uh, and one, one other thing, Gary, excuse me one second. Uh, for the uh, benefit of the community, the board has to ask the questions first. They have that opportunity, and then we will allow the community to do so. Please comply with the rules that we have set, and please comply with the time frames involved. Which is one minute. Uh, Ma'am, since Sergeant Namoka is not here, I was going to address a question to Sergeant Namoka. I'm not sure whether that area um, where the bike path connects from West Club to Waipaho, uh, that back road, uh, it's not paved and um, there's a lot of uh, daytime and nighttime uh, activities going on that uh, a lot of bikers don't want to pass that place. Um, I, that area, I'm not sure who that belongs to, whether it's the Waipaho weed and seed, or whether it's the ever weed and seed, or whether they can work together to clean up the place. Thank you. Very, very quickly, uh, there is a report here, House Resolution 194 was passed, that allows for that cleanup to transpire in that jurisdiction you're talking about, behind Westlock uh, Village. Uh, Westlock Fairways, Westlock Estate, on proceeding down to Westlock itself, Shoreline Park. That is also known as the Leeward Bikeway, and that is also in a report, and improvements are to be made, and so when the DOT comes on the state Leeward Bikeway project, and in combination with this resolution, the Navy is also expressed because they have land adjacent. They're gonna mitigate this. They're addressing it. Okay, Tom is now working for the uh, <laughs> Weedy Seat. All right, uh, I guess he answered that for you. Board Chair Rich Hargrave. Rich Hargrave. Uh, hang on one second, Kobe. Uh, any other board members? Questions? Okay, Kobe, thank yes. you. Yes, um, Board Chair Rich Hargrave and Pipe Fish. I was just going to ask if there were any other questions regarding weed and seed from any other folks in the audience of the prosecutor's office. Okay, and with that, is there any others? Okay, not at all. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Okay, uh, we're going along now, Department of Water. Uh, good evening, uh, board members and uh, <coughs> um, neighbors. My name is Kel Sawil from the Board of Water. Uh, for this evening, my report, um, last month on April the 26th at 5 a.m. on um, 911274 Road, we did have a water main break, an 8 inch water main. It was old main, it was originally installed back in 1972. Um, for water announcements, um, the Board of Water Supply continues to work hard to control costs for ensuring that our customers uh, have access to safe and reliable water supplies. However, dramatic increase in fuel prices are making it necessary to implement a modest adjustment to your water bill. Beginning July 1st, 2008, you will see a new power cost adjustment line on your water bill. The adjustment will be 9.4 cents for every thousand gallons of water you use. That will mean an average of about a dollar and 22 cents per month per household. This adjustment is needed for an unexpected energy cost increase occurred during 2007. A bill suffer will be added 
Would additional information be added to your bill starting in, in your May and June bill? Our water rates are still among the lowest in the nation and in the state. BWS continues to look for ways to reduce costs and to keep our rates as reasonable as possible. For more information, you can always visit us at www.boardofwatersupply.com or you can call 748-5000. The, sec the second announcement, um, and I think I got about 15 seconds, <laughs> is detect the leak weight. Um, did you know that leaking, a leaking toilet can cost you a lot of, a lot of money and, and waste a lot of uh, good precious water. So in the month of uh, June 1st through the 7th, uh, we, we is our Detect the Leak Week program. And with that, we could um, uh, we can apply for a free leak check. I have this pamphlet all over here on the um, community tables. You can take one, fill up your name, information, and send this to us, and you can be, have a chance to win a free leak check in your, in your home. Also, I have some um, leak tablets up over here on the table, and the instructions are in the back to how you can use this to find leaks in your toilet. Um, also, lastly, um, I did have a concern as residents here in Ever Beach, and I do live here myself for the past 26 years. Um, there has, as everyone uh, who lives here knows, there's a we have a, we have a we had a project out on Geiger Road and. Um, Geiger and Kapolei Parkway, and there's uh, there's recently been some iron plates out there, many iron plates, holes being dug. And as soon as I seen our contractor, Perfecto Construction, digging back up the road again, I, I went to talk to our inspector, and our, what I found out was that the reason for the holes was because there was some differences between the city and the Board of Water Supply, and uh, and the materials. Uh, that they're used to backfill before they do the final patching on the road. So what happened was an agreement was made to the city and the board that they were gonna uh, do these pilot holes, dig it back up again a little bit, and then uh, the city came along and they did this thing called a compaction test on this thing to make sure, I guess, that after the final patch is done, you're not gonna see sinks, sinkholes or anything. So the inspector did come by, and they did do the test, it has been passed, so you'll be seeing the final patchwork being completed within the next uh, month or two. That's the word I got from the inspector. Oh, oh okay, that's a, a long time for a whole. Okay. Uh. <laughs> it has to go through the procurement process for bidding, well, to bidding for, for the paving. No, I understand. Uh, board members, Gary? Yes, sir. All right, you got his tablets. <laughs> Thank you. I brought that. Right. You're not supposed to take those. Yeah. Drop them in the tank. <laughs> Not candy, no. <laughs> uh, uh, Kurt, uh, real fast. Uh, before they start paving, previously they had fixed the road before perfect them taking it all out. The paving was done wrong. Had the bumps in the road. They just laid the asphalt down to patch the holes. So what the, what the cement area was was uh, filling up water during the rain time. So hopefully uh, that's in order to scrape all that out and make it level so that we can actually ride on a road that is smooth and not hit bumps all the way through. Are you, you talking about, about the, are you talking about the cement area or the mechanical area? The cement, the cement area, area how the middle can come up instead of flat. Okay. With the with the um, existing road up. Alright, I'll mention it to to um, our instructor Mike. Okay, uh, and yeah this is a holdover from last time. Uh, it came up after you had left. Uh, there was a question about the meters. Uh, Chair, do you remember that question regarding the meters for the uh, recycled water, I believe it was? Uh, yes, I did, as a matter of fact. Uh, but okay, then it was um, referred to the Board of Water Supply, if I remember right. Yes. Um, uh, we were taking some notes. Okay. <laughs> um, uh, actually, the question was asked uh, Cal, with the Board of Water Supply, to bring information available uh, for the supply meters. Remember uh, last month you talked about the uh, meters being available that you can monitor uh, during the water, right? Right. Was this when I was here or after I left? Uh, I think it was after. Actually, yes. Buddy man, what he said, he said that they have a meter that you can put in, but they can actually 
put in the same way. Because we in a, you would go to put water in our grass, uh, and it goes down and not into the sewer. Mm -hmm. and, and we get in charge of the water that is going to the sewer. He said, they have something that uh, you can monitor. You can have two meters, one monitoring the water that is going into the ground, and one is going to your mouth. Can I? I think what you're talking about is like um, they do have a separate. You could install like a sub meter that would that would um, be dedicated for your non-portable use, such as irrigation. Okay, and that way the water that goes through that meter is not going on your sewer system, and you're not going to get charged through that sewer charge. Okay, I believe that program is with the uh, Environmental Service Wastewater Branch, and. There, you know, that's that's separate from the portable water site. So you may want to uh, talk to the city rep over here, or if there's a, a rep from the environmental service, they may be able to. Is anyone here from environmental service? No, city, anybody from the city side? But uh, yeah, I heard about that program, but I don't believe. I'm not sure if the board of water supply is the ones that comes in, goes in, and and, and um puts in that sub meter and exactly how the program works. I can follow up on it for you and I'll get back with, you know, get back the information next month. Okay, all right, that sounds good. Yeah, um, uh, Gary, what we might want to do, just as an uh, additional follow-up, uh, fill out one of those more for us and give it to Bola so we'll do a follow-up. Thank you, sir. Uh, board members, any other board members have any questions for Cal? Okay, any uh, people in the audience want to call me? Board Chair Richard Gay, if I could be recognized. I have a question for Cal. Is it your birthday today? Oh. How did you find out? <laughs> Happy birthday. Oh, you must have Googled me. <laughs> 16 again. Thank you, Gal. Appreciate it. Happy birthday. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, don't worry, Lieutenant Bowman. Lieutenant Commander, sorry. Okay. Uh, good evening, Mr. Chair, board members, and uh, residents of Eva. Uh, I'm Lieutenant Commander Coleman, the officer in charge at uh, NMC Death Pearl Harbor. I don't have anything in particular tonight for the board, uh, but I do want to let everybody know we will be partnering with the uh, state representatives. Mr. Hargrave and um, the neighborhood board to uh, clean up that stretch of road behind that's leading to the naval base and it's outside of the uh, International Golf Course. So as soon as we get a meeting together and coordinate the efforts, we'll put some people out there and clean it up. It's more for the safety than it is for aesthetics, so because there's a lot of cars and uh, a lot of pedestrian traffic go that way every day. I even go there, but right now we, we're collecting mattresses and rugs and things out there, which we want to hurry up and get rid of. So if anyone want to join us in our efforts to clean up that road, I mean, feel free. But if you don't, I got people that's going to go out there and uh, attack it and knock it out. So uh, we have a big set of dates yet. We're going to be uh, working with the, uh, like I say, state representatives. And uh, we're going to do a meeting over here at Evan International. We establish a good date and get the equipment set up. We're going to go out there because we'll probably have to close the road for safety purposes in order to clean it up properly. So, it's going to have to be in the for that. Okay, um, yeah, we do it. Let me make one fast comment. Uh, in reference to that, I'd like to go ahead and then, since we have a full house this evening and all of you are residents of Evo Beach 96706, please feel free. And I'd like to encourage you to come out and assist with that project once that, once that date is set. Uh, uh, it is for our whole community benefit. Uh, to get that area cleaned up, and let's work together as a community. Uh, Gary? Oh, it was just between you and I. You still have not I would send you the letter so you can send it to the print and the department of planning and permitting, because that has got to do with the road for safety. And I apologize that I have not written the letter to your We'll get to go. Okay, any other board members? <laughs> Comments? Okay. Uh, community, any comments for uh, military? Okay, thank you very much, sir. Okay, I see he's available. 
Okay, moving right along. Um, we're going to move into item number five, board business. Uh, reviewing the substance of the regular meeting minutes from April 10th. Board members, any uh, comments, corrections?
Okay, the um, Office of Elections is seeking precinct, precinct officials to assist voters in the, in the uh, community on Saturday, September the 20th, 2008, for the primary election. Uh, and also on Tuesday, November the 4th, for the general election. And if you're interested in this, uh, being a precinct official, uh, please contact the Office of Elections. And the phone number is 453-VOTE. And that translates to 8683. 453-8683. And that's for the uh, precinct operations. Or you can sign up online www.hawaii.gov slash elections. Okay, so uh, we'll probably make that announcement again. Uh, however, if you are interested, uh, please go ahead and follow through, make that contact. Uh, if you did not have an opportunity to write that down, get all of uh, our uh, commission assistant over here, we'll get you squared away on that. Okay. Mr. Chair? Uh, yes, sir. <coughs> I, uh, because Emma Beach... Uh, uh, you have an announcement, sir? Yes, I did. Okay. Jim Lord, I, want, I want everybody to know that there's still five city council members who feel that steel on steel is not the right way to go. And since this board endorsed the Philly system, I just want to tell you that we're still working on it. And uh, we think we'll end up prevailing in the end, despite all that. Okay. Thank you. Okay, good. Thank you very much. I just want to say I'm Jim Burr with uh, New Boys Today TV. And if you want to watch our show on Sundays at 5, Channel 54, uh, uh, we will tell you and uh, we'll bring you completely up to date on this issue. Um, okay, good. Thank you very much. Just for a uh, uh, point of clarification, um, uh, Jim, I, I apologize for the last name, but uh, the gentleman that just made the statement uh, that the Evan Neighborhood Board uh, supports the system uh, that he is uh, talking about, uh, I need to make it clear that this board took a position to support alternate uh, uh, alternatives for mass transit or in fact for the rail rubber tire meets the road, whatever. Okay. All of the all of the all of the different alternatives. Thank you. Okay. So it wasn't one specific item that we supported. We supported the ultimate of all available. Because we need to hear about them all. And I think as a community we need to know what's out there and make a uh, educated uh, decision on what we're doing. Okay. Uh, second announcement, Montecchio Pacific. Good evening, Mr. Chair, members of the board, neighbors in Eva Beach. Eric Batalon for Montecchio Pacific. Um, just here tonight to inform everybody of our name change. We're formerly known as Montecchio Rehabilitation Center. Um, services are still the same. We're still you know, we've been around for 68 years, and God willing, we'll be around for 68 more. A um, couple of name changes I want to bring attention to is our Meals on Wheels program. Uh, we've added the words more to Lana Kila Meals on Wheels and More. What we do is we deliver meals to homebound seniors. We have quite a few in the Eva, Eva Beach area that get meals on a daily basis delivered to their homes. These are seniors, your neighbors, and mine who cannot prepare meals or go out and purchase meals for themselves. And we have volunteers who go out on a daily basis and deliver meals to these people. The second name change that I would like to bring attention to is La Nakila Workforce and Development Services. We are now La Nakila Services. And what we do is we give people with disabilities the, the, the ability to find work for themselves. We have independent um, businesses that are run primarily in part by people with disabilities and um, we have 
For example, we have a food service kitchen, we do full service catering, um, we do groundskeeping and ground maintenance by contract. Um, geez, we do shelf stocking, we do cashiering, and these are all done by people with disabilities. And um, if you are in need of our services, please uh, look us up on the web, lanakilapacific.org. And with that, I'd like to thank you for your time. Questions from the board? All right, thank you very much. And let me interrupt for one second before uh, and get the question. Okay, did you tell them to go? Did you tell them to quiet down? Thank you. All right, thank you very much. Uh, board members, any questions for Eric? Board chair is asking for a position. Lanakila Pacific. Yes. Okay, and I have a quick question. You may not have the answer to this. Um, recently, the finance, the conference committee, finance committee, uh, chaired by Marcus Oshiro and Senator Roz Baker, cut TANF funding for job creation programs. Is your project going to be affected by these cuts? Well, you are right. I do not have the answer to these questions. However, um, I left information on the desk with my contact information. If you should um, be interested, email me.